A parent's love is undeniable. The lengths a mother or father will go to to protect their children, remarkable. A Corvallis couple is a perfect example. Good evening, I'm Brandi Smith. And I'm Brian Richardson. But to know what makes this family so special, you must know their whole story. KEZI 9 News reporter Jennifer Richardson is live in the studio with an exclusive interview with the family stuck in the midst of a Russian adoption ban. Jennifer. When Russia decided at the end of December to sign a bill banning Americans from adopting Russian children, it threw dozens of U.S. families into limbo. Many were in the final stages of adopting their little ones. With the ban in place, some didn't know if they would ever see their children again. The veils from Corvallis were one of those. Their journey to complete their family was one of courage, compassion, and continuous faith. Half a world away, this bright, blue-eyed, blonde-haired beauty sat waiting in a Russian orphanage, <laughs> waiting for life's plan to pan out. Here in Corvallis also sat Kayla, Justin, and Brayden Vale, hoping to make their family of three a fearless foursome. We um, have always wanted to adopt. Every child is born typically with a clean slate, um, and if they aren't brought up in a home with love and care, um, they don't get to take advantage of, of some of the uh, opportunities that we take for granted. The Vales say they were drawn to Russia because some orphans have a bleak future. Some even become the victims of human trafficking and sex trade. We felt like if we could um, hopefully rescue a girl from that, um, that would be a huge blessing for us. It hasn't been easy, to say, to say the least. No. Years. no. Oh, there's so many peaks and valleys in this experience. Let me get in front. The Vales started looking for their little one two years ago. In that time, there was countless hours of paperwork, trips to Russia, court, and even grieving one adoption that didn't go through. We had many moments of doubt, almost calling it quits, and uh, we just never felt that that was really the right decision. Then in September of 2012, word came the Vales were on a plane to meet their little Elena. Talk to me about that first meeting when it, it was so brief. Well, I mean, we anticipated this moment for a year and a half. It was very fast. Um, they, they basically brought her out. They woke her up from her nap and brought her out into the room, and it was sort of like a look her over and tell us if you want her. Very good. And what did you think? Um, wow, she's adorable. Um, and we gave her a book. She was so overwhelmed by something as simple as a book. And they too were overwhelmed. After signing the paperwork, there was definitely um, a little bit of fear. Is this, is this the right decision? Or are we, um, what are we doing here? This changes our life forever. <laughs> Regardless of any fears, it was still their dream to bring Elena home. But the months to follow would be another test of endurance. The Vales still had to go through adoption court in Russia, more paperwork, and a waiting period, so they came back home. And here's where those peaks level off and quickly become a vast valley of uncertainty. In late December 2012, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a bill that would block all American adoptions of Russian children. Confused. I think really confused, trying to figure out where did this come from. The ban was seen as a political ploy and retaliation against a recent U.S. law that bars Russians who are implicated in human rights abuses from entering the U.S. But it also cited circumstances where U.S. families didn't take good care of their children adopted from Russia. As things progressed, um, there became talk of not allowing these 46 children. They kept throwing out different numbers. Um, and it became more and more clear that we were one of those, um, that they were not going to allow the, our, our daughter to leave the country. Everybody in the U.S., even a lot of organizations in Russia, were desperately trying to find out what the implications of this were. I remember at one point um, praying that um, God would, would provide a Russian family for her. A childless crib sat waiting, but the veils wouldn't give up. It was a roller coaster of emotions. Um, there were days of just intense grieving, um, thinking that we would never see her again. And then days of hope, um, where we felt like, okay, we can go get her. And in those days of hope is when Kayla made the courageous decision after hearing that in fact, Elena's paperwork was complete 
it was time to bring their baby home. They decided Justin would stay behind with Brayden in case the situation took a turn for the worse. You could have been arrested. You didn't know what was going to happen. It was probably one of the most difficult parts. Um, I, I, there were times that I was thinking this is crazy. Wow. Um, oh, it was probably the hardest week I think I've ever been through. Kayla and her father flew into Moscow late on a January day and at first light went to the passport office. It was amazing. Usually passports take a little while to get days, sometimes weeks. Um, and he had her passport in a couple hours. And that next step, the orphanage. He looked up and she saw me and she just started giggling and squealing for joy. Then it was off to the airport with still the uncertainty of whether they would be allowed out of the country, even with the approved travel documents. The Department of State didn't have a lot of information. They just didn't know what was going to happen. And to her relief, they let her pass through. Uh, wanting to scream like a little schoolgirl, I was so excited. It sounds like you were being watched over. Yeah, absolutely. Every step of the way. And oh, how fast three Ooh. became four. My favorite part was Brayden, our son, getting them, getting to see each other for the first time. And um, he's just been so excited. <laughs> Kisses <it's> from brother. <laughs> Layers of the hurt and the fear I feel like daily are shed. But their hearts are also heavy. It's unclear whether future Russian children will ever get to call Americans mom and dad. Very sad for um, the children, that the other children in this orphanage, and knowing that the chances of their being adopted um, are very slim now. But if it can't be Russia, the Vales at least want to let people know adoption stateside or abroad is a blessing. I feel like she um, has an incredible purpose here and um, she's just such a miracle. She was meant to be here and um, I'm so excited to see why. What will you tell her of? this story. What is the story? Um, it's just a miracle. Um, I mean, we have a blog and we call it our Russian miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and like most miracles, we may never understand the details along the way. What we can understand, this outcome. Let's go get brother. And once in a great while, there will be those like the Veils who will inspire us all to dig deeper and find the courage to never give up hope. The Vales worked with Holt International during the adoption process and says it's a great resource for those looking to adopt. We've linked the information to our website. The Vales say Elena continues to impress them each and every day. Live in the studio, Jennifer Richardson, KEZI 9 News.